Hey guys, welcome to a Blender tutorial where today we're going to go over our Zen Garden. So this is something that I was kind of thinking about the other day. I finished kind of watching Shogun recently and I really liked the intro, right? The intro of this cool kind of Zen Garden animation. We're not going to do all of that. I was just mostly curious about if there's a programmatic way of kind of bounding different boxes and things like that to make sure we get these kind of like beautiful, you know, ripply things. So first things first, you always want to make some reference, right? So I, I went in here and I kind of just pulled some different Zen Gardens. So we like these like concentric circles. This is something you can do. But the main thing to notice is see how they have kind of the rocks are raked a certain way. Then around certain objects, they kind of get these rings around them, right? And we see that here. This is the Shogun intro, right? These beautiful curves, quite nice here as well. More Shogun, more Shogun. Fun boat thing would be kind of fun too. Maybe that'll be a different project. So get your reference, get an idea of what we're trying to do. That helps kind of break the task into smaller pieces. So we're going to make a new Geonode system. Boom, easy. And then we don't care about the cube. So instead what we're going to do is a grid, right? So the grid's going to be the main thing for uh, doing the basically the Zen Garden plane. But it's remember that we're basically going to be uh, displacing based off of the geometry. So we're going to pump this up a lot. So 30 for now, we can always increase it later. Sometimes, sometimes I do this to make it a bit more consistent and you can pull it out as a driver if you really wanted to. Uh, so that way you make sure it's even. Um, yeah. Anyways, so cool. We have our grid. Now we got to make sure we can actually make the zones we talked about. So we have to make the grid and the geo system here. So we can say geo nodes. We also need to make the collection of rocks or the objects. So let's just do a cube, scale it down a bit and then make another cube and then just combine them both into a new collection. Let's say rocks. Cool. Uh, let's make this a bit smaller. And then there, cool, nice. We have this here. Now we're just gonna click and drag and pull the rocks in. Right here, boom. Now it's important to always remember to do a couple things here make it relative and also this is instances but we've got to make sure to realize geometry uh, realize instances boom nice so now it's real geo okay so how are we going to get this like wave texture right so there's a wave texture easy nice so we can look at this and kind of maybe view it off of this we're seeing this okay it's like it's not displacing how we would want to expect. I'm not displacing. We're not getting the, the visual of how we want to get it for the actual curves. So what I saw we had to do was actually capture an attribute and then get uh, the position, the position vector and pop that in here. Watch. Now it's X, but I think if we do this, I could have sworn this happened. Maybe I made a mistake. Face? No. Wave texture, it's factor maybe? Nope. What are we doing here? No. Point maybe? Let's see, ah, there we are. Because now it's evaluating based off of all the points on the, the plane. So I guess, what is the difference on these two? Let's just check. Cut. I guess it's the same. Whatever. I think it's still good to have clean clean attributes on this. Maybe it's important, maybe not. Feel free to pop off in the comments. That's okay. Uh, cool. So now we have this on the plane. And I guess we can change X, Y. That's weird why this was working now before it wasn't. Interesting. Oh, this is a point. Yes, I, we had it on edge. Oh, ooh, edge is kind of nice too, actually. Anyways, let's just stick with point. You can make this like three, a bit smaller. Uh, move this down here. Cool. So now we have that. Now we have this as well. And now we want to make sure we actually get the distance between essentially the grid as well as the... Uh, the collection of rocks we want to have, right? So then that for that, we need to have uh, geo proximity, right? Now, this is something I always forget. I always kind of mix them up. Like, should it be the proximity of this or that? But 
we're taking the proximity of this geometry, so this geometry right here, and the positional data of the thing we're, we're caring about to like evaluate essentially. So then we're looking at this, and if we go boom, now we see these nice rings off of the distance. So then uh, this is kind of frustrating. We always have to do this. But so like we see this here, we can verify it's working. If we grab this and move it over, we click back in and click on the viewer and then there we go. We can see that it's actually being evaluated correctly. Nice. Okay, so now we have this new positional data. What we can do is then also use the same kind of exact same wave texture and pump it in as well. So this will make those rings put it into the vector. So now it's gonna make this data go into there. So then we can see, and nice. Now we're seeing the rings as we would expect. And again, we move it, click back in, <laughs> view, nice, we see the rings shift. Okay, we're basically done now, right? Now we have to just mask these effects together to make sure we, we can toggle between this and that depending. Okay, so we have the rings and we have this. So what is the main thing we can do in order to, to kind of like see the difference between this, the, the two? We have the distance here as well. So this can be a zone. So if we do a greater than, mm -mm -mm. Uh, nope, it should probably be a math greater than, but I guess this might actually work. It's all the same because it's still a logic thing. So we can say greater than, I don't know, 0.2 seems reasonable. Uh, it could even be less depending on how far you want the rings to go. And I think also too, these scales should also be the same number. So we're gonna make this called um, ring scale, right? This was at three and we're gonna pump these the same. That way these stay the same. And we're gonna make a little note here, boom. What was this again? This was resolution, plane res. Nice. Okay, probably should clean this up a little bit. Okay, this is uh, plane rings, rock rings. Always important to clean that up a little bit to make sure we know what we're looking at. Okay, cool. So we have this mask here. Remember one is white and uh, zero is black. So this would be the mask for uh, these rings here. So if we take this value and multiply it, so math, oops, math, uh, multiply, take this factor and this, and this should mask correctly, boom. Nice and easy, why is this? We can see this later, I guess. I don't know if the details, that's fine. Phase, do still scale, that's fine, okay. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna do less than, so it's the exact same thing. Pipe this in. Uh, we can pull this geometry as well. Make sure, and it should be exactly correct. Point two, but I think it'll just work. I don't know why it's not visualizing correctly. That's okay. And we're gonna math here, this and this. And we need to have this. Yes, there we go. So now we have our two masks right here. Uh, if I can clean this up a tiny bit, boom. Nice. There we go. Uh, uh, uh. Nice. Keep this a bit clean. Just probably frame this. We can call this uh, plane rings. And then this can be rock rings. Cool. And then we're gonna add these together. So we're gonna go, and you hold, I think it's Alt, or is it Alt P? Yeah, Alt P to unparent it in case you have uh, things inside the, the same the same frame. So we're gonna add this mask with this mask and this should get the perfect mask, perfect. So then all of this is just the displacement masking. So we haven't done the displacement at all. So the question now is how are we going to displace? So we're gonna displace with a set position and we're gonna set position with this geometry data coming out here 
And then the offset is exactly this. And this should be piped out and it should blow up. Yep. Cool. So what is happening is it's going also on the normal too. Not the normal, it's like the, I guess the, the random noise of the wave texture. So to clean up for this, you can just do a vector math. And we're gonna multiply by one on the Z. So we're only pulling on the Z, right? Now we're getting a nice, good deformation. It's way too big, at least for what I'm going for. And again, as we're working, we should look at reference and we're seeing gentle waves, right? So that means we should just do a vector math. We're gonna just do a math. It's all the same. And multiply. Actually, is this the same? No, it's not. We can do every single axis at once. So we should scale. Boom. And maybe like 0.2. How do we feel about that? Mm. It's a bit much. 0.1. That seems reasonable. And then also if you increase resolution, you're gonna get better kind of curves on everything. And at the end, we're gonna do a little trick to make sure that we get the resolution uh, down to make it faster to actually uh, render this if you have a worse computer or whatever. So cool. So now we have basically the basic effect and we can check to see how it's working. We can grab the little box, move it around. Ooh, yeah, buddy. We pull it up, we're seeing nice little displacements. We're seeing kind of move things move around. We hop into edit mode of this puppy. We grab a face, we extrude. We bevel a, an edge, right? Everything is uh, adjusting real time because this is a programmatic procedural effect. Nice. So the easiest way of cleaning this up and making sure it's gonna be super simple is just to do something really easy. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a blur attribute, but we're first gonna do a little uh, set position, not set position, yeah, set position and blur attribute. We're gonna pipe that into the position and the value is gonna be the position. So basically we're saying make the position the position, I think that's what it's basically doing. Make sure it's a vector. And then we're gonna just soften it up a little bit. So we can go like maybe three iterations. But before we do this, we're gonna do a set shade smooth here. That helps a lot too. And then we're also gonna do a subdivide mesh. So we're keeping that extra geometry from before and we're gonna divide it two times. It's a lot, but then we go back here, 25, who cares? Nice. Uh, so we have the resolution here, then we doubled it twice. So that is kind of how we're keeping the amount of verts reasonable. Whoops. So let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I think it looks good. So if we don't have this, we mute the, mute the, the node, it's gonna be quite rough. We, ha we have it turned on, we get nice curves. It's looking pretty good. Uh, if we wanna change the ring scale, we can do this to make it even less. But I think three is okay. And there we go. This is the basic effect. And then to clean it up, you could probably should set up material. Let's just call this material and we go to shading. Boo, boo, boo. Hopefully it's working, yep. And then we can just make a really simple, like sandy color. Uh, bump. Bump goes into the normal. Uh, white noise. No, it's not white noise, my bad. Just a noise texture. Uh, we should just do this onto the height. This, preview this to make sure it's making sense. Should go to object, clean it up a little bit. Let's do 500 or something. Cool. Nice, how is this looking? Ooh, really bumpy purple stuff. So then what we can do is we can lower the strength like 
kind of looks like sand now. We're faking all of this geometry with some good old fashioned normal maps. Eh, point two is okay. And then, I don't know. What do we think here? This seems reasonable. Uh, now the roughness is kind of messed up. I guess we can take the same normal texture and put it into the roughness. And then we go to color ramp. Kind of gate some of this. Uh, how's this looking? So one is super shiny. Uh, black is not less shiny. Maybe it's the other way around. I always forget. This looks way shinier. This is some wet looking sand. So maybe it's the other way around. Maybe one is super rough. So we go white uh, all the way. Boom. Pull this down a little bit. Yeah, this is looking more more soft. Nice. Nice. So this is like just really, really quick. And then we can probably map this same thing into here, into the color. Uh, and then we probably should change these a little bit. So like this, maybe. Uh, and then maybe like... Sure. Why not? Cool. So basically, this is just a quick, uh, like a sand text. Sure. Why not? Uh, nice updates there. Boom. Here we go. Cool. Uh, let's make sure we have EV on. Faster to render. And then you make your little scene, you render it out. Good to go. So, what did we learn here today? Oh, also too, what's nice is if you make new objects, since we did, we instance in the, in the collection, well, this sun, I wonder if the sun will actually displace because it's an object, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have geometry. Uh, 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 but if we add new objects, regardless of the object, like, so let's say this Suzanne, as long as it's inside the collection, it will dynamically displace. So that's pretty cool. So anyways, yeah, this is the basic effect. It's pretty quick. Uh, inside the geometry nodes group, you could also add extra displacement and, and uh, on, set, on different set positions past this. This is the main effect you just need to chain together. After that, you get the waves, whatever you want. Anyways, I hope you guys learned something. We learned uh, a bit of how to um, set the scene really quick with just kind of uh, setting up a collection, bringing it in, uh, clean masking displacements, and then a quick little uh, procedural texture. Thanks so much, guys, and hope to see you guys in the next video.